Okay, so thank you. Um, so our tutorial today is on um, Redshift. And uh, maybe I would love to begin this tutorial by asking, is there anyone who can tell us uh, what their understanding of Redshift is? Anyone who can uh, tell us what their understanding of Redshift is? Okay. Um, so we we have Dan who can maybe tell us what they understand about Redshift. Okay. Fine. So I think I will take us through um, uh, the Redshift. Uh, so I think I'll I'll present my screen and then. We will go through um, the presentation of uh, Redshift. So um, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Is it visible to everyone? Okay, so okay, thanks. Uh, so I think we can go through um, what um, Redshift is. So, um, so in this in this tutorial today, we are going to try to cover out what uh, we an understanding of AWS. Uh, why uh, AWS had to use Redshift. Uh, what is uh, Amazon Redshift? Uh, the advantages of us using the Amazon Redshift. And then we will also look at the architecture of uh, the Amazon Redshift. And then additional concept uh, of uh, the Amazon Redshift and then companies that are using um, Redshift. Yeah, so uh, we will begin with um, AWS so that we can get an understanding of what AWS is. So uh, we ask ourselves, what is AWS? Um, AWS or um, the long term of it, the long um, term of it is uh, the Amazon Web Services is just uh, a secure cloud service platform from the Amazon. So this cloud service <clears throat> helps us in uh, data and also computation um, services that we need for um, uh, data and um, also in computing. So um, it is a secure service for uh, computational services uh, that we need. So what services do we have that are offered in AWS? So AWS services can be used to create and deploy an application in uh, the cloud. So basically, you know, with machine learning, we do a lot of applications of creation of applications. So um, AWS provides us with that platform uh, for us to do our, to create and also deploying of any applications that we have. And then also AWS provides service over the internet. So uh, we can be able to access the services of AWS over, over the internet. Um, and lastly, AWS uh, is uh, pay, uh, you pay only for what you use. So meaning that the services that you have or you, the services that you acquire from them or use from them, you only pay for the service that you um, are using. So it doesn't charge you like for an entire uh, package of thing that they offer but you only pay for the given service that you are uh, you are using. So um, that is AWS and what AWS um, stands for. So we just know that AWS gives us a computational power that we can use for, uh, uh, for computing or for services that we have in a uh, computer. Um, so 
if we have AWS, so then why do we need the Redshift? Yeah. So it, we are trying to understand why why Amazon Redshift. So before the Amazon Redshift, what used to happen is that people used to uh, get data from maybe the um, a data warehouse, and then the, you have to download that data so that you can use it in uh, doing your query. So before you do maybe a query of a given data, you have to you will you you had to download the entire uh, data from maybe a given data warehouse or a given data lake so that you are able to query that data. Um, so um, this usually it is um, um, uh, the disadvantages of uh, this or the cons of the cons of um, traditional data warehousing services, it was time consuming for someone to download the data that they want to use. Yeah. So given that you have a big data warehouse or a big data lake, it will be time consuming for you to download that data so that you can use it. And then there was um, it is, um, maintenance costs outweighs the benefits. So the cost of maintaining those, um, the given data warehouse after you have downloaded it, so you, it, um, uh, it's quite expensive. So it outweighs the benefits that you you um, you have the benefits that you have when when you uh, download that data. Uh, and then also it um, um, they, there was a loss of information if you uh, download that data. So if, for example, you have uh, data that is a uh, uh, data that is uh, streaming or a data that is live. Uh, you will lose some information that you would want. Um, maybe, for example, sometimes also the data that you have, maybe you are not able to uh, download the whole set of it. Yeah, you would lose some information. And then the data that you have from the data when you download the data is, uh, we had a problem of data rigidity. So um, the data that you have will be rigid. So it means that it's it's not a flexible data that you can um, you can work with, especially. Uh, when you're making uh, queries for a given data set. And then, um, yeah, so, um, but now we ask ourselves, what um, what is Amazon Redshift? So the problems that we have seen comes with the traditional, uh, the traditional um, data warehousing services uh, was solved using this Amazon Redshift. So these problems could have been solved with the help of the Amazon Redshift, where we can query our data directly from uh, the data warehouse. And we are able also to use um, the, that given data when it is um, in in the, the warehouse or the data lake that we have. So um, this problem can be solved or um, is solved using uh, the Amazon Redshift. So what exactly now our definition of Amazon Redshift? So Amazon Redshift is a, a cloud-based service or a data warehouse service uh, that is used for collecting and storing data. Also, it enables a user to analyze the data using um, BI tools, and uh, it simplifies the process of handling large-scale large, um, large -scale data sets. So if we have a large-scale data set, so what Amazon Redshift does is that uh, we are able to store our data in a cloud-based service um, or a data warehouse service. And then after we have stored that data, that given data that we have, well, um, that data is used for collecting and uh, it's used for collecting and storing the data. Also, uh, the Redshift enables us that we, we are able to analyze that given data and we are able to do queries of um, in, in that given data so that we have, um, we are able also to present um, using BI tools, uh, uh, we are able to visualize that um, data and it simplifies the process of handling large data sets. So that's basically what the Amazon Redshift uh, does and uh, what the Amazon Redshift um, uh, was brought to, to solve. <clears throat> so. The use cases, we have a company that was known as DNA, which was a telecommunication company, um, which had an issue with managing website 
data and Amazon S3 data, which um, led down to a slow process of their application. So when the application they had to uh, when the application became slow, they had to solve this challenge. And then to for them to overcome this issue, the Amazon Redshift was used. Yeah, the Amazon Redshift was used, and um, the company noticed that 52 percent a 52 percent increase in the application um, performance. So they were able to when when they had the application, um, the application was lower because uh, when was slower when they were collecting um, when they were managing different websites uh, using uh, um, when they were managing different website data and also when they were getting this data from the s3 bucket so they had to solve this problem and uh, when the amazon redshift uh, came into place they realized that they were able to solve uh, this problem and uh, there was an increase yeah they noticed there was an increase of 52 percent uh, of the performance of the application that they were using. <clears throat> so um, a few facts that maybe um, you didn't know or maybe you knew about uh, the Amazon um, Redshift is that the Amazon Redshift uh, costs less to operate than any other cloud uh, data warehouse. Yeah. So the cloud data warehouse of uh, the Redshift, it costs less than any other, uh, the Amazon Redshift costs less than any other cloud data warehouse. And then the performance matters. In terms of performance matters, and Amazon Redshift is the um, the fastest data warehouse available. And then there are over 15K, uh, 15,000 plus customers who are using um, Amazon, um, who are using the Amazon Redshift. So um, what are the advantages of um, using the Amazon, um, the advantages of using the Amazon Redshift? <clears throat> so number one, it has the high performance. Yeah, so uh, the performance as compared to other cloud uh, data warehouses is that the Amazon Redshift has a high performance. And then uh, there's a low cost, meaning that uh, uh, compared to other um, <clears throat> compared to other cloud services uh, the um, the cost of using Amazon Redshift is lower meaning that uh, it is a little bit cheaper considered um, compared to the other to the other companies or compared to other cloud services and then the scalability yeah you can increase <clears throat> the scalability meaning that um, the scale in which we are uh, having our uh, the redshift can be increased. <clears throat> if, for example, you are using two nodes, you can be able to increase those two nodes to uh, six nodes, yeah, without having much problems. So <clears throat> we are able to scale even the amount of data that we <clears throat> we are querying. So, for example, if you are querying uh, 20 GB of data, you are able to scale that so that you query a TB or um, 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 the petabyte of a given data. So meaning that we are able to scale uh, a given data uh, to use um, in, uh, in, in Amazon Redshift. Another thing with Amazon Redshift is that uh, the availability, yeah, it is, uh, um, it is readily available as long as you have AWS, yeah, account, you are able to um, <clears throat> you're able to use Amazon Redshift so it is freely available not freely available but it is available to um, <clears throat> those who would want to use um, the Amazon Redshift and then the security <clears throat> it is more secure to use um, uh, Amazon Redshift you are also able to set up your own <clears throat> security um, uh, your own security preferences that you would love to use when you're using the Redshift. So you can increase maybe the security level in which you want to use uh, for the AWS. So for example, if you want to change um, <clears throat> maybe the password in which you're using and things like that, you're, you're able to do so without, uh, 
without much uh, disturbance. And then <clears throat> the um, Amazon Redshift is also flexible uh, in that you uh, you're able to use it to uh, do a lot of visualizations, especially. So the data that you're using is flexible because it is stored somewhere, but you can easily you can easily query that data so that uh, you use that data. It is not rigid compared to the traditional uh, ways in which we were querying the data. So the, you realize that in the traditional ways in which you query data, you um, have to download that data into a given, into your machine so that you can do your query. But with um, Amazon Redshift, it is flexible uh, because you just have the data collected and stored in a given uh, uh, in, 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 in the Redshift, and then you are now able to query that data uh, flexibly. You can uh, be able to query that data without having to download that data. And then it is uh, uh, it is simple a simple database migration. So you're able to migrate the data um, in a simple manner. So those are the advantages of using um, the Amazon Redshift. Uh, and then now let's um, let's get to maybe the architecture of the Amazon Redshift. But maybe before we got we get to the architecture of uh, the Amazon Redshift, do we have someone who has a question um, up to whatever we have covered? Maybe before we get to uh, the architecture, yes, Daisy. Um, thank you. Could you repeat the point on Redshift being flexible? Oh, okay. So. Um, when you are looking at the traditional um, methods um, of how we query our data, we realized that uh, we had to download yeah, the, the data set. Let me just share with you again on the problems yeah, here. So, <clears throat> so when, when before, when we were looking at the reasons why, why Amazon Redshift, we realized that you had to download the data that you have either from a data warehouse or from a, a data lake, you have to download this data so that you're, you, you're able to use it. So that makes the data that, after you've downloaded this data, that makes the data very rigid because you can only use the data that you have downloaded. So with um, with Amazon uh, Redshift, uh, we, we are able to query directly from this data that is, um, that is from the, um, the data warehouse or the data lake, and that makes it uh, that makes the data that we have to be uh, flexible to uh, to use, other than the data being rigid uh, in that um, uh, in that um, you are only able to use the data that you have downloaded. So the flexibility comes when you are you um, you you have the data stored and collected and stored and now you are just able to query the, uh, from the given data warehouse or from the given uh, data lake that you are using or for the, the given store that you're using so there's a flexibility in the data that you are using other than the data that you're using being rigid does that make sense uh, daisy yeah thank you okay. thanks do we have someone else with a question before we get to the architecture of Amazon Redshift. Okay, so looks like we don't have anyone with a question. So we will proceed to the architecture of um, the Amazon Redshift. So uh, this diagram basically it represents uh, what is contained in the architecture of uh, the Amazon Redshift. We have the client applications, and then we have um, JDBC, ODBC, and then we have um, the leader, the leader node. Yeah, after the leader node, we have um, uh, we have the computer nodes. Yeah, 
So maybe we have computer node one, computer node two. Um, yeah, up to the number of nodes that maybe you would love to use um, for in your um, in your redshift. So uh, this this representation here is uh, um, basically the architecture of the Amazon redshift. <clears throat> and so we are going to try and look at the different components in this um, in this architecture of the Amazon redshift. So down here is where we have the data warehouse cluster in which we, uh, the data warehouse cluster and then we have the uh, how the, the client is able to interact with this, uh, the cluster. So, yeah, so uh, we have uh, the client application. Yeah, we have the client application uh, where we, the client application of the Amazon Redshift, where the client interacts using uh, two drivers. Yeah, so those two drivers are uh, the JDBC and uh, the ODBC, um, which the client uses so that uh, the client is able to interact with uh, the data warehouse cluster. Yeah. And then we have um, um, the JDBC. Um, Amazon Redshift services can monitor connections from other applications using the JDBC connection. So JDBC um, connection is where um, the redshift uh, or the, the cluster is now able to, um, is able to, uh, we are able to link it so that the, the data cluster is, the data, the data warehouse cluster is uh, linked to the application of, of the client that is using. So the linkage is created with uh, this, the JDBC um, so, so that the redshift is able to monitor the, the the connections of what is happening in the application and the cluster. And then we have the ODBC. ODBC allows the user um, directly from any application uh, to interact with the data of uh, the Amazon redshift. So the data which is in the Amazon um, redshift, um, <clears throat> uh, th this ODBC allows so that we the 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 the, the client um, the client is able to interact with it from uh, any any applications any application that uh, that the client is is using. So the client is able to interact with the data which is in the Redshift with um, um, is is able to interact with the data which is in the Redshift from any of the applications that uh, the client is uh, is. Is, is using that is the the ODBC what the ODBC allows us to to do <clears throat> and then we have uh, the nodes um, the nodes of the compute the compute nodes that um, uh, that we have so the Amazon Redshift has a set of computing resources and these computing resources uh, are the ones that are called the nodes so for example if you go if you want to create your cluster, you would be asked that uh, um, you would choose like how many nodes, um, how many compute nodes do you want? So for example, you'd choose like, maybe I want two compute nodes and those compute nodes are the, one, the, the Amazon Redshift, uh, they, set, they set aside for you um, how many uh, computing nodes you would love to use for um, your given service that maybe the given um, cluster that that you are creating yeah. and then we within those nodes we have like maybe the slices the node slices and things like that <clears throat> so and then we have um, the, the cluster the Amazon Redshift has a set of computing resources called the nodes which is um, gathered into a group yeah and that group is now what we call the, um, the, the, the warehouse cluster. So um, you see like the whole of this one, we have a leader node and then we have the computer node and then we have the node slices that you'd love to use. So the whole of this um, group here is what now we call, um, we call a data warehouse cluster, yeah? A warehouse cluster where someone is 
um, the specifications of whatever they need um, are uh, is provided. The given data they have, the compute nodes, the number of nodes that they are able to use, um, or the, the, they they request to use um, within a given that given cluster that they have. So the whole of this, the whole of what is contained here, is what we call um, um, a warehouse cluster. And then we have um, each each cluster has one or more databases. So, for example, if we have this cluster uh, here, so we we are able to create uh, from it uh, different databases, one or more uh, more databases that can be contained in this in this given uh, in this given cluster. And then we have um, the leader node. This node uh, it manages the the interactions between uh, it manages the interactions between the client application and the compute nodes. Yeah, it analyzes and uh, it analyzes and it also develops designs in order to carry out uh, database operations. So within this this given uh, leader node, we are able to do analysis. And we are also able to to carry out different database um, operations. Like, for example, if maybe you want to do an operations in a given database, like for example, you are querying a given data, you are able to do it using uh, this uh, this leader node. Yeah. So with this leader node, yeah, you are able to uh, do your you to manage the interactions between you manage the interactions between what the client the client application um, wants versus um, what is contained in um, in in the, in the data, data the databases so so like for example if you um, you you want to do uh, given operations in maybe a given uh, database you are able to do to do it through this leader node so that leader node is what it, it it's like the one creating a relationship between what the client wants and what is contained in a given uh, database. And then we have um, this node. Uh, it manages, um, yeah. The node manages the, the the interactions between the client and uh, and the database. And then we have we have the compute node. So the compute node executes the programs and it shares the results back to the leader node <clears throat> for final aggregation. So this this leader node is it, it's it's like the one that gives the instructions to the compute node so after those instructions have been done with the compute node it it um, uh, communicates back to the leader node so that the leader node gives it back to what the client needs so um, the compute node um, it 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 executes the programs that um, the program instructions that come from the leader node and then it shares the results back to the leader node for the final aggregation yeah so we can have different compute nodes for a given cluster or a given data warehouse cluster so after those 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 compute nodes are able to they're able to uh, perform or execute the programs they share back those um, they share back those given information that they have or the results with uh, to the to the leader board to the leader node so that the leader node is now able to give it now to the client whatever the client needs and then we have um, um, node slices uh, the compute nodes are uh, categorized into into slices yeah and then each node each node slice is allocated with specific memory space where it processes its workload yeah so the the the, the, pros, um, the work of processing uh, a workload um, it's is um, uh, is given is done with these node slices so you'll realize that we have like a leader node and then we have a compute node so in that compute node again we have the node slices and those node slices um, the node slices they compute um, they categorize uh, the compute nodes they are 
categorized now into node slices. And then each node slice is, is allotted uh, with a specific memory space, yeah? So <clears throat> it's like we have, um, before we have the compute node, there are different, uh, not, there, there, are categor there are categorizations of uh, slices. So those node slices, they, they have different memory allocations. And then um, there are a lot of different memory, um, specific memory space, and then where it processes um, its workload. Yeah, so so that is that on on uh, the node slices. Um, so these node slices, uh, they work in parallel. They work in parallel order so that they are able to finish their their work. So the manner in which those node slices work, they work uh, parallel, uh, parallel in order in in a parallel order so that they are able to finish the the work that is given to them from. Um, the compute node from the leader node. And then additional concepts in Amazon Redshift, uh, we have column storage, and then we have uh, the concept of uh, compression. So we'll try and look at uh, maybe the concept of column storage, and then we look at the concept of compression. So the concept of column storage, uh, a column storage is an essential factor in optimizing query performance and um, uh, resulting in a, a quicker output. So the manner in which Redshift um, uh, places this is that you see like, for example, this one we have, uh, uh, the example below shows a database tables, uh, table stores record into disk blocks by, by row. So like, for example, this one we have, uh, a column storage of this one. So we'll have like the whole of this one here is like a column, uh, a, a column storage. But you see um, down here, there is um, a bigger uh, junk of data. So we we categorize this one uh, as as a column for uh, for us so that um, we are able to store as an essential factor in so that we're able to optimize uh, the, the the query in which we, we we are doing and then the performance and resulting will be quicker other than going from the different columns that we have this one all has been chosen as or it has been taken as as one column And then we have the concept of uh, compression. The concept of compression is uh, compression is uh, is a column level operation which uh, decreases storage requirements. So uh, it eventually improves the query performance. So uh, the syntax for column compression is as given uh, below. We are able to create, and then we create a table then give it a name and then column name, and then we encode. And then we give the type of encoding that we would love to give so that we have a, a compression. Um, finally, we have companies that are using Amazon Redshift. Um, yeah, and we have the given companies. We have companies like McDonald, we have Philips, we have Pfizer, we have Equinox, we have liar company yeah and then yeah so that is it on the presentation of today on um, amazon redshift uh, so do we have anyone with um, a question on amazon redshift <coughs> Yes, Daisy. Um, the difference between column storage and compression is not so clear to me. Maybe it would help to understand what's preferred or what's better over the other. Ah, okay. Um, 
<clears throat> so um, it's it's a little bit more or less the same uh, because you realize that compression, uh, the concept you're able to compress so that you have like a, um, a column storage, for example, you see different columns have been uh, placed together uh, with a concept that is called, is, is like we are trying to compress the different columns so that we have one column of um, uh, this one. So this one is treated like a single column. So we've been able to compress like this given number of columns into one. Does that make sense, Daisy? Um, yes, so it's the same thing or how, how different are they, like column storage and compression? It's, it's, it's more or less the same thing. Okay. Do we have someone else with a question? Okay, it looks like we don't have anyone with a question. So, um, maybe I, I will stop presenting and then I present again. So um, I'll take us through so that you're able to see this as well. Um, so let me know, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, um, so uh, we, as we have seen, Amazon, um, Amazon Redshift is in the AWS. So if you want to access Amazon Redshift, you'll go to AWS, and then you um, you'll sign in. If you don't have an account, you'll create an account, and then after that, after signing in. Just sign in so that we are able to see where we can get the Amazon Redshift. So I'm already signed in. Um, so in the services here, we can look for Amazon Redshift. Um, we can use, we can search for Redshift. And then we see we have um, Amazon Redshift. So um, this is the Amazon Redshift and then um, the dashboard of it. So uh, here, um, you can be able to create a cluster. Um, and then from that cluster is where now you're able to, uh, in your cluster, you can have different databases where you can query, you can visualize, you can do your uh, analysis um, of that given data. from the database. Yeah, so um, uh, here we can see, like maybe the, the, or if, you, if, you, if, you, if you want to create um, a free trial and then 
uh, you'll be able to see how uh, our, our cluster is created. So you can be able to um, choose the configurations, the database configurations for uh, your cluster that you are creating. And then you uh, you can choose a password or you can auto-generate a password for your given um, um, cluster that you are creating. And then um, after just ensuring that you have been able to do your con database configurations, then you can create a cluster. So um, when the Redshift cluster is uh, being created, uh, you will also load a sample data for you to use after the cluster is created, Amazon Redshift starts and loads the sample data that you want to use either in, in your DB, your database, uh, to use maybe if you want to query the given data, or you want to uh, analyze that, that given data. So, um, So uh, after you um, after you've created your cluster, uh, you can be able to see from your dashboard like the number of nodes uh, that you the resources overview of your given cluster that you're using. So uh, from here you can see like uh, how many nodes are you using in your given cluster nodes on demand, reserved nodes that you're using, yeah. Um, and then um, from there, you can also be able to see from this given um, dashboard here, the number of queries that you've made, database connection, disk space that you've used, CPU, uh, utilization, and things like that. And then the query overview, how many queries per second, the average queue of length. Um, yeah, it basically it just shows you uh, like um, how you have, how you are using, maybe how your cluster, you have used your cluster and uh, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yeah, so that is how you are able to get to um, use um, your, um, your cluster and you're able to see how um, you're utilizing maybe you are given cluster for this one. So at the moment, there's no data that is available here um, for, for us to query and things like that. So yeah, so basically, um, you can see from here the data successfully we created a, a Redshift cluster one. Um, and then we have also loaded the debt, loaded loaded um, the sample data. So from there we can be able to query the data uh, that we have. So, um,
Yeah, so basically, let's wait for this so that we finish with this one. So here is um, now um, uh, the, 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 pl the, um, the platform where you can use to query your data. Um, yeah, so from the given uh, database that you're using. So from here is where you can write your codes to query, to query um, a given data from um, the the database from the data that uh, you have. So, yeah, basically, that is how to use Redshift. Um, so maybe we can have the last set of maybe questions, and then we can bring this to a close. Do, do we have someone with a um, question? Okay, looks like we don't have anyone with a question. Yes, Matilda. Um, hi, Desmond. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for guiding us through so um maybe do you mind walking us through um maybe just loading the data maybe data that is in my pc i'm sorry i might have missed it if you've done it before okay Hello? yeah and my second question is yeah um is is does redshift work the same way as amazon as sorry, as Microsoft as well. Okay, I'm I'm not very um, familiar with how um, Microsoft Azure works, but yeah, maybe if someone is familiar, could um, will help. I'm not I'm not familiar with how how the Amazon. Um, Azure, the, the, the Microsoft Azure works. So, so when we were creating our, um, when we were creating our cluster, um, just trying to, So um, so when you're creating your cluster, you would be uh, asked uh, if um, what what data you would love to use. So like for example, uh, you can see you can create a cluster, then let's see how this one comes. So from here, like if you maybe you're doing a production, you're able to uh, configure uh, for fast, consistent performance. So uh, you'll choose the size of the cluster that you want um, and things like that. So um, you also give the name to the cluster and then uh, the sample data uh, that you're using here is uh, sample data is loaded with the Redshift cluster. So the sample data that we have here is the ticket, uh, 28 MB. So, um, I'm sorry, Desmond. Yes. I'm asking if uh, if there's a way we can load data from from my PC. Like, um, yeah, the, you've shown us the sample data, but is there a way for us to load data from data that I have already, my data? 
aquí. Um, I'm trying to get where um, a given, there's a given code for JDBC, which you can use uh, so that you are able to load uh, data from maybe from the client side, from maybe your PC. So there's, um, Trying to see uh, it is and trying to see. So yeah, so from here you can use you can use you can download this uh, JDBC so that you are able to. Uh, you're able to uh, query data directly from your from your uh, uh, from your from your from your maybe PC or uh, whatever database that you want to query uh, your data from. So the JDBC gives you like a platform in which uh, it gives you a connection in where where you whereby you're able to give uh, give. Um, you're able to uh, connect uh, the data either from your PC or from wherever that you are accessing your data so that you use it in, um, in a, um, so that you use it in, in, in Redshift. Does that answer your question, Matilda? Yes, thank you. Okay. Do we, do we have someone else with a question? Okay, so if we don't have anyone with a question, maybe we uh, maybe we can um, we can bring this to a close. Okay, okay, so if you don't have any other question, we can bring this to a close. So thank you guys. Uh, um, that will be that on uh, Redshift. Can talk more on Slack. Bye.